Hi and welcome to another chemistry video. In this video I'm going to make sodium chromate. Here's some sodium dichromate. I made using this method as a test run. It's very dilute. But it obviously works and it looks quite nice. Sodium chromate is quite important and the main thing is to make the synthesis amateur friendly. So there is another synthesis that's also amateur friendly and that is dissolving stainless steel like this guy here and then oxidizing the chromium free. I have a solution of chromium free in here and you see it's green with an oxidizer for example uh, calcium hypochlorite to chromium 6 which is then uh, obviously a chromate. Um, well this takes quite a while so dissolving the stainless steel and then filtering it and precipitating everything can take well over a week while this synthesis is much faster because it uses higher temperatures. So it uses sodium hydroxide uh, which is available as a drink cleaner to every amateur I guess. Um, manganese dioxide my manganese dioxide is a store bought, but uh, you can also find it in batteries, and there is a load of uh, good videos on how to get it from a battery, um, in particular zinc carbon batteries. And finally, there is a chromium free oxide. Um, don't mistake it with chromium trioxide, they are different compounds. I have some of it here. This is an online purchase but I've already seen it in a hardware store and it's uh, quite safe actually used as a wall pigment and it's green and some of you who are watching this video now carefully they might see that um, well this is also a chromium free salt or the salt of uh, water basically and um, you could just dissolve it with a mineral acid to get a chromium free solution and then oxidize as well. With this stuff it doesn't work um, because it's fused at very high temperature so it doesn't react with any mineral acid in any suitable way. So we have to fuse it uh, again at high temperature, this time with sodium hydroxide. This all takes place at around 400 C and my goal is to make 15 grams. And here you see the corresponding uh, e-ducts to make 15 grams of product. I don't expect to recover everything, so the yield will probably be around 10 grams. I've now added all the reaction e-ducts to uh, a cut-off gas can. And this is the reaction container, so-called the crucible. And the next step is mixing it, which I do by shaking it with a hand as a lid. Everything has been mixed into this black powder. So now comes the fun part, torching it. And I would also advise covering it to prevent the chromats from getting all out. Something's going on inside there and the paint starts to burn off, which is rather unpleasant. But I think the chromats here are of more concern than the paint. The only problem is I don't know what stink is the chromate and what's the paint. Maybe you see something in sewing happening. So the paint is off, the nasty stench has gone away and there is water formation. It might be water that's already present in there or it's a reaction product. We'll see. Oh, that paint! Okay, the dish went boom boom uh, due to excess heat, so I came up with this new system. And I covered it with aluminum foil, and most of the paint is gone. So this should work now. Hopefully. So I torched it, I dissolved it in water, and it's a mixture of yellow and green. Let's see what I can get out of this green mess. A bit of yellow would be nice, some chromates, and for that I need to filter off 
all the junk. The slurry here probably gets a second run, so you see, and um, by far not all has reacted, but um, a nice amount. I hope so. And you see, yellow, that's a success. That means there's chromate in this junk here. So this is a your filter, and later I'll take a closer look at the chromate. There it goes, chromate drop after chromate drop. And the f some interesting experiments will follow very soon if this is done. And the filtering is done. Here is the chromate, quite a bit actually. Um, here's a little bit for testing. And that is some old uh, acidified, very dilute dichromate and some copper sulfate. Um, back there I've already neutralized um, a chromate solution, but I have not neutralized it. I, but really, yeah, I neutralized and reduced it um, using vitamin C. And here you see all my equipment um, sprayed over with vitamin C, made ready for... Um, reduction because chromium-6 is really nothing I want to uh, let go into the environment. Um, I really don't want to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is a, a quick pH test on what's the pH we have here. And as assumed it's strongly basic and I definitely want to change that now. I prefer a pH of around 7 or neutral before I'm going to add a copper sulfate to my copper chromate. But first I want to demonstrate you the chromate dichromate transition on this little example. So I'm slowly going to add some sulfuric acid and you'll immediately see the color change forming dichromate and probably some CO2 gassing out. Maybe some carbonate made it in there. I don't know. So this here is also dichromate but it's so dilute that you really don't see it. So with this example I'm going to show you the reduction with vitamin C because that has no more use. While this here stopped reacting and you can clearly see the difference. Noise and red, noise and yellow. I love it. Let's check the pH really quick. Acidic. That's a lot of cleanup that I have to do. So now for the vitamin C reduction. I guess that's already enough. Um, so let's give this a little mix. And you see, whoop, it went clear. And it reduced all of the dichromate to a chromium free salt which color you can probably not make out because it's so dilute. I see a very slight green to it. We can also repeat this now for the dichromate that is a little bit more concentrated and you really see that it's changing color I don't know why it's bubbling so hard. And it almost went to black now. So I guess that's quite a lot of chromium free. That's not green, that's black.
Maybe you see it, it's slightly green. But very high concentrated. So this is a really high concentration of chromate, or it was of dichromate, and this was a low concentration test run. So I'm going to convert this now to copper chromate. So basically just this thing here, only with copper there. After a lot of um, adding acid and base forth and back, I managed a bit of a green plus, which is something like a pH around 8. That should be sufficient uh, on now adding copper sulfate, which I have here. This copper sulfate reaction uh, solution will react with the little bit cloudy chromate now to form copper chromate. The idea behind of this is making copper chromide catalyst and to do this I need to decompose the copper chromate um, in the future which I'm going to do in the electric oven. And you see the reaction starts, takes place and the chromate should now be dropping out as probably insoluble as copper chromate is not very soluble. This bubbling really makes me I really don't know what causes this. Maybe it's some acid in there. I, I have to check if the copper has some acid in it. Yeah, it's the copper uh, sulfate, it's slightly acidic. So, probably some leftover carbonates getting roasted here.